This is the Emergency Medical Minute. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. All right. Good evening, everybody. So um, I think everyone's aware that we have uh, droperidol back, and uh, I personally have had uh, some good experience using it for nausea, vomiting. I've used it a little bit for sedation, uh, but there was an interesting uh, study I saw recently that compared droperidol to other medications for uh, sedation of agitated patients in the emergency department. Um, Interestingly, the study was actually done in 2005, but they never got around to publishing it until this last year. Maybe now that your is back, they're like, huh, we have this data set from 15 years ago that maybe we should put out there. So what they did in the study was they compared five milligrams of IM droperidol to a couple doses of Geodon and then a dose of Ativan, IM. And it was a well done, double blinded, randomized trial in an emergency department. And they looked at kind of sedation at 15 minutes and they looked at a couple of measures of respiratory depression. And they found that droperidol was amazing. Um, the Reparadol was uh, about 65% effective at getting patients to a good level of sedation at 15 minutes, uh, whereas the Geodon and Ativan were between 25 and 35%. So in this study, did much better at sedation and had um, less respiratory depression and no cardiac uh, complication, no, lo- no prolongation of the QT. So, um, you know, some more data uh, that uh, droperidol is probably good and safe for sedation. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we should keep trying to use it and uh, seems good. Yeah, Grace. Why was droperidol off the market? So why was droperidol taken off the market? That is a pretty long and complicated thing. But, um, you know, the answer is that there were uh, some potential uh, cases of QT prolongation with torsades. Um, and then the FDA gave it a black box warning. And then it got taken off the market because it stopped being manufactured. Um, so no one in the United States was manufacturing. So it wasn't banned. It's just that it was not available. And then there's a little bit of a controversy as to whether, you know, there was maybe some industry kind of, uh, you know, push for that because there were other antiemetics that were coming on the market that were a lot more expensive and quote unquote, maybe safer, maybe quote unquote, safer sedation um, options. Um, But it was not. And then in those 15 years, basically, that it was gone, you know, they looked at the data and a lot of people said, well, it was never really proven to be any more dangerous than regular Haldol or any of the other antipsychotics. There were just maybe some uh, misapplied you know, data and maybe a little bit of controversy there. So um, in general, it seems to be a very safe medication. Thank you. Hello, EMM listeners. We are dedicated to providing you with high quality educational content free of charge and without ads. As a nonprofit organization, we rely solely on donations. So if you enjoy our show and are able to make a one-time or recurring donation to help cover our operational costs, Any amount is helpful in making this show possible. Click the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you.